Howdy friends, my name is Wes Lee. I fix band instruments for a living. Thanks for stopping by my shop today. This week's been pretty busy. I've had some piccolo overhauls to do. Got in a new sousaphone that's gonna be a project here for us coming up. Been doing a lot of tool maintenance. So things have been pretty steady around here. It feels like we're settling into a springtime pattern, which is always a good thing. Today we're gonna work on a trumpet. It's pretty basic repair. Looks like the instrument was probably dropped, fell on the second valve slide, dented it. Looks like also there's a mouthpiece dent in the casing. So we're going to address all that. So let's jump right on into it. Take a look and see what we got. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for stopping by my shop. So here's what we've got today. Number two piston doesn't work. Uh, you can see that, yeah, the kitty probably put this in backwards. And then it looks like it probably got dropped like this. But we look here and there's a mouthpiece dent. And all it takes is a dent like that. The horn hit the ground, dented the second valve slide, jammed the second valve slide in, and of course it doesn't work. We have a series that we're going to go through. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the slide. Then we're going to remove the dent from this. Then we'll flex this back to see if this will help the number two slide by making all of this round. We're going to use a proper size mandrel, take out this dent, and then we'll see what we need to do from there. Let's go. Got the piston out, it's mighty dirty. We're gonna go ahead and get this in the chem flush while we fix everything else. You wanna fix a clean piston. All right, so at this point, I've got my second valve slide repaired, put back in the same way. My piston is still in the ultrasonic chemical flush, so I'm gonna pull in another piston, and I'm gonna see. Okay, I believe our, I believe our issue now is our dent. From here, we're gonna use a series of several different steps. What we're going to use is a steel mandrel. Cut the size of the interior of the casing. If you don't know the size of the piston that you have or the size of the casing, there are several things that you can do. With a micrometer, on the flat surfaces or the non-port sides of your piston, take your micrometer and dial it in. This one is going to be in thousandths of an inch. The other thing that you can do is take an inside measurement with an inside gauge. And what you're going to do there is you're going to pull the springs back. This tool is going to go inside. You're going to rotate it around until it's comfortable. Lock it, pull it out, and then use your micrometer on those points. And that will give you the size that you need. You never want to use a reamer. Never. You are not trying to cut away anything that's in the way. This is never a good solution. The best place for these, sometimes we'll use this soft brass burnisher. You can get carried away with these as well and do damage to the instrument. So you have to use extreme caution when using these. We're going to use this steel mandrel cut to size. We're going to use two methods. One is a rebound method where we put it through. We use a rawhide mallet and cause a rebound. What we're trying to do is bring the casing back around and push that dent a little bit. And then finally, we're going to hammer tap that out. So 
Sometimes if it gets bound up, you may have to give it a love tap. Already, you can see that it moves better. I can still feel it catching. Notice that I've left the pistons in. It's nice and smooth. Now here's our number two piston after the ultrasonics. And I am not a live and die by the ultrasonic cleaning. I still do a lot of the traditional methods, cold soaks and whatnot, but the cavitation cleaning on the ultrasonics, man, it does the detail work on the pistons just is so good. So now we're gonna drop our piston in. Our piston is totally dry. Our casing is dry and clean. Works great north, south, east, and west because a lot of kids don't play perfectly up and down. The piston feels great dry. Myth would have you believe that when you oiled it that it would make it work better. That's false. When you oil the valve, that's when you start to see any imperfections start showing up. So while we got our piston working good dry, Let's oil it up and see what we have. I noticed in the case that they were using a petroleum base. So they get Wes's fancy valve oil. That's right. I make my own valve oil. It's a secret recipe, kind of like Kentucky Fried Chicken or Popeye's. Oh, yeah. There we go. So we're pushing off north, south, east, west. Everything is groovy gravy. So our second valve slide is taken care of. Our piston is taken care of. There's a little bit of a scar down there, as you can see. This one's all good to go. Thanks for stopping by my shop today. This horn came out great. Going to live another day for sure. I hope you learned a little bit about how we measure the piston sizes, how to choose the right size mandrel for the job, and how a steel mandrel and a light tapping goes a long way further than using any kind of a rub device and especially those terrible expanders that we're not going to talk about anymore. We saw where those went. <laughs> okay, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you next time around. Wes Lee signing out.